do you remember the point where it was it was you were drinking like everyone else to the day that you could tell something had changed in yourself? No, it was it there's not it's not like that. It's not like there's a fl- like all of a sudden you're, you know, guzzling whiskey. It it's a very slow ramp up and all I knew is that it used to be that one or two glasses of wine would take the edge off and make the shoulders drop and everything seemed rosier and softer and you know more hopeful and more like it was just magical at first you know that's the problem talk to anybody alcoholic and they'll tell you it initially it worked elizabeth vargas was once one of the best and brightest news reporters on abc she doesn't know when she became dependent on alcohol but eventually was able to admit it she can now point out reports where her clear and composed demeanor disappears as the drinks take over she also knows that it affected her family even her children began to worry as her husband told her to get help Keep watching to learn why Elizabeth Vargas's husband divorced her immediately after this happened. Elizabeth's Early Career Elizabeth Vargas was born September 6, 1962. She and her siblings, Amy and Christopher, were army brats. Their father, Colonel Rafael Vargas, moved them around the world. They went to Okinawa, Japan when she was four. Then they moved around to Germany, Belgium, and the United States. Elizabeth graduated from high school in Heidelberg, Germany. That's when she developed a passion for journalism. She graduated with a bachelor's degree from the University of Missouri in Columbia in 1984. She served as a student reporter at KOMU-TV there, and former advisors spoke well of her work ethic. She was the host of World News Tonight and 2020 for nearly 20 years. She bravely investigated disaster zones. She even covered some of the world's most impactful tragedies, like 9-11 and Ronald Reagan's assassination. Her reliable work ethic continued. Little did she know her life was about to change. Falling in Love Elizabeth still found time for love in her busy schedule. She met singer Mark Cohen at the men's semifinals at the U.S. Open in Queens. He was putting on a private concert for his superfan, tennis superstar Andre Agassi. Mark was watching him play the next day, but couldn't keep his eyes off Elizabeth. He even thought about gentlemanly offering her his coat. He was nervous about taking things any further. He was a divorced father of two and hadn't been on the dating scene for a while. The spark was still there, so he asked her out on a date. Elizabeth and Mark say they fell in love in the dining room of her Upper West Side apartment. They talked about everything, including politics, song lyrics, and religion. It didn't even spoil the moment when Mark's children Max and Emily came in. Mark knew they, as he put it, had, quote, lived very different lives. She'd been single for most of her adult life. I'd been married for most of mine. She read the op-ed page. I read the arts section. Perhaps it was a case of opposites attract. Mark decided to propose after three years of dating. He couldn't have done it without his family. He took his children to Central Park to reveal his intentions. Emily excitedly asked if it were an April Fool's joke or something. He told him it wasn't, and they met up with Elizabeth for dinner at Nick and Tony's. Max, without even being asked, got down on one knee there to say, Elizabeth, will you be my stepmother? It was a sweet moment that helped seal the deal. The couple was married July 20th, 2022. They became a blended family when they also had children of their own, Zach and Sam. Dealing with addiction Elizabeth suffered panic attacks since she was a child. They began after her father began serving in the Vietnam War. She was told to hide her feelings to avoid seeming weak, but that only intensified the problem. She turned to drinking to overcome her feelings. Her addiction was much more than a few cups at night to ease the stress from her high-intensity job. It led to major binging sessions that even once became potentially deadly. Elizabeth said, I, on one occasion, had what I know to be a lethal level of alcohol in my blood system. And um, even that didn't scare me into stopping. Her family began to worry as she kept binging on their vacations together. These moments were another wake-up call, she said. I was drinking and sleeping. And I do vividly remember like one afternoon, Sam standing by that, my head in the bed saying, Mommy, when are you going to get up? I would die for my children, Diane, but I couldn't stop drinking for my children. Elizabeth's early attempts to get treatment for her addiction weren't as successful as she and her family had hoped. She went into rehab while on a family vacation in Utah in 2012. She left before the program was completed and eventually relapsed. She released a statement to ABC 
acknowledging her dependence in the hope that others could learn from her struggles. She admitted, I am an alcoholic. It took me a long time to admit to myself. It took me a long time to admit to my family, but I am. The amount of energy I expended keeping that secret and keeping this problem hidden from view was exhausting. She has also said, as so many other recovering alcoholics know, overcoming the disease can be a long and incredibly difficult process. I feel I have let myself, my co-workers, and most importantly, my family down, and for that I'm ashamed and sorry. I'm committed to battling and addressing this debilitating disease and want to thank everyone who's offered their unwavering support during this trying time. A second attempt also proved a failure. She checked into rehab in Utah November 6, 2013, but left too early again. Mark urged her to get real help. She said, He thought I drank too much. And I remember him, um, he was angry when he said it, uh, and grabbing my arm and saying, you have a problem with alcohol. And that just made me really mad. Despite the anger, it worked. She turned to a rehab center a week later. Left alone after rehab, Elizabeth had been struggling with alcohol addiction for years. She knew she needed help when she relapsed for a third time. She returned from a Tennessee rehab center in 2014. When she got home, she was shocked to find that her husband of 12 years wasn't there to welcome her with open arms. He'd begun divorce proceedings without telling her. He was on tour when she checked out of the facility. Elizabeth went for an interview with George Stephanopoulos to speak about her addiction. She admits that she can see the shocked look on her face in that interview. As she said, it was brutally difficult. I don't think anyone can imagine what that felt like. Elizabeth's life today. Elizabeth doesn't ever feel like she can properly apologize for the pain she caused her ex and her children. She and Mark's relationship is now focused entirely on co-parenting their sons, Sam and Zach. She says, We both love our children and we will be in each other's lives for the rest of our lives because of these two amazing boys. Mark is also supportive of Elizabeth's continual recovery journey and being open about it. He says she'll always have his continuing support. He said, I have tried my best to protect our family during the course of this very complex and challenging journey, and that has included honoring Elizabeth's privacy. Now I applaud her efforts to shed some light on the link between anxiety and alcoholism, which I imagine will help countless numbers of people and families. Elizabeth even wrote a book about her struggles. Between Breaths, a memoir of pain and addiction was published September 13, 2016. It became an instant New York Times and USA Today bestseller. She was shocked by the response it got, saying, I hear from somebody every day without exaggeration. They either stop me in the street or at the gym or at the airport or I get a letter or an email or uh, a message on Facebook or Twitter from somebody who read my book and finally got help or somebody who read my book and finally understood their alcoholic mother or father um, who read my book and were able to reach out to a colleague. Um, and I feel incredibly gratified for that. Elizabeth has been able to overcome her struggles. Part of that means getting back to work. NBC reported in 2018 that she'd been sober since 2014, and that made them willing to rehire her. She says her children always come first, but she's grateful to still be working. She got signed as the anchor of A&E Investigates in April 2018. She broadcast the first series, Cults and Extreme Belief, in May of 2018. The untold story aired in April 2019. Elizabeth also got the chance to bring back a beloved show. She hosted a revival of America's Most Wanted on Fox starting March 15, 2021. That isn't the end of her recent career achievements. She's the anchor of News Cafe on A&E's FYI Network. She guest anchored News Nation Prime from September 2019 to 2022. She became the host of a syndicated true crime series called I Crime with Elizabeth Vargas. Elizabeth Vargas Reports premiered on News Nation on April 3, 2023. She'll also step in as the host of A&E Investigations. In her own words, it's a tough business, and I realize that a lot of talented people don't make it. So I feel very fortunate that I've had the long career that I've had. I'm a single working mom, I have two kids to support, but I absolutely love what I do. Now it's time to hear from you. What have you learned from Elizabeth's story? Let us know in the comments section below.